Uh, see if you can guess this one. Is it a song or a slogan? No, it's a slogan. A very popular slogan. Go ahead. Da 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 Oh, that's easy. America's finest silver plate is 1847 Rogers Brothers. Oh, you're just too smart. Sure. <laughs> From Hollywood, International Silver Company, creators of 1847 Rogers Brothers Silver Plate, present The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring America's favorite young couple, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. Well, folks, let's look in on the Nelson household at 1847 Rogers Road. It's late morning, but Ozzie and Harriet haven't even eaten breakfast yet. They were up quite late last night, and as we join them in the living room, they're discussing the events of the night before. Gee, that was a wonderful party last night, wasn't it, Harriet? Yeah, it certainly was. And it's amazing what happens to you after one glass of beer. <laughs> now, just what is that supposed to mean? You trying to imply that one glass of beer made me, shall we say, a little hazy? We shall say it. <laughs> it's ridiculous. After the party, I drove us home all right, didn't I? See what I mean? We're the ones that gave the party. <laughs> I was just going along with the gag, Smarty. It's a very lovely party, and you know it. Have you called the insurance company yet? <laughs> I haven't really checked to see if there's any damage. See, we certainly had a lot of interesting people here last night, didn't we? Yeah, I wonder who they were. <laughs> a lot of them were complete strangers to me. Of course, I was busy most of the evening being the perfect host. Oh, yeah, you were the perfect host. Well, now, why do you say it that way? I thought I was very attentive and very charming. I hope you noticed that I admired each and every woman's dress as she walked into the room. You admired every woman's dress, all right. In fact, you mortified that one woman completely. Well, how should I know she wasn't wearing a bustle? <laughs> oh, say, and speaking of being a perfect host, how about the time you helped serve the sandwiches? Oh, I thought I served the sandwiches very well. Well, honey, there are certain things that guests take for granted. You didn't have to keep saying, they're free, they're free. <laughs> Everybody knew I was only kidding. Oh, and by the way, dear, if we ever give another party, let's not invite that Charlie, huh? Charlie who? You know that Charlie, whatchamacallit. Oh, him. I thought you liked him. Oh, I guess he's all right, but he's such a ham. Always trying to hog the spotlight and be the life of the party. Well, I didn't notice. When was that? When? Why, every time I began my impersonation of Edward G. Robinson... <laughs> Oh, the one where I put the cigar in my mouth and I say, oh, so you guys are Okay, right. dear, okay. I've heard it so many, many times. And another thing, how Charlie can tell those corny old jokes. Oh, Gosh. hey, did you notice how all the women left the room every time somebody started telling a risque joke? Yes, that always annoys me. Why can't they let the men hear it, too? <laughs> uh, it was a swell party, though. I really had a wonderful evening. Wasn't it fun dancing for a change? Yeah, it sure was. Hey, how about that big fat friend of yours doing the Roomba? Yeah, she was quite a sight. I'll say every time she danced around the room once, she rearranged the furniture twice. <laughs> I wonder if Gloria has breakfast ready yet. I'm absolutely starved. Starved? <laughs> well, not exactly, but you know how us women like to exaggerate a little. Oh, yes, which brings up a little matter I've been wanting to talk to you about. What's that, dear? That exaggeration of yours at the party last night, the one that involved me. Well, I was... I've been wondering when you're going to bring that up. Why did you announce to everybody that I could do 50 push-ups? <laughs> well, I'm proud of you, dear. Were you proud of me when I could only do seven and nearly burst a blood vessel? <laughs> You certainly let me down. That's just the point I'm trying to make. I didn't let you down. You just built me up too high. Well, how would it have sounded if I'd said, my husband can do five push-ups? 
That'd be pretty small potatoes. So I simply said 50. You noticed that everybody was very much impressed. Yeah, until I couldn't get up after the seventh one. <laughs> you must exaggerate, dear. I wish you'd leave me out of it. Oh, here's David. Good morning, son. Morning, Pop. Morning, Mom. Good morning, David. When are we going to have breakfast, Mom? Well, maybe I'd better go out in the kitchen and see how Gloria's coming along. Party kept her sort of busy last night, and she cleaned up afterwards. I'll be back in a minute. How was the party last night, Pop? Oh, it was a lot of fun, except for one embarrassing situation your mother got me in. What happened, Pop? Well, your mother insisted on bragging about me, and she just let herself go. Of course, she's a very lovely and wonderful woman, and I wouldn't criticize her for the world. But, oh, brother, how that gal can exaggerate things. I know, Pop. When she tells other kids' mothers about my grade, she always adds five points on every subject. Yeah, I'd like to hear what she'd tell them if you made a hundred and something. Don't worry about it, Pop. There's not a chance. <laughs> oh, I'm not, David. Well, nobody's perfect, you know. Where'd you pick that line up? From you. Oh. <laughs> when you get older, son, you'll find out that women are the biggest problem in a man's life. They're so stubborn and obstinate. And yet, at the same time, they're so changeable and confusing. It's impossible for you to figure them out. Well, gee whiz, Dad, why do men marry them? Well, I'll take that up in a different talk. <laughs> right now, it's your mother's exaggerating I'm going to work on. How, Pop? Well, I don't know just yet. Say, David, I've got it. Why didn't I think of this before? This is wonderful. What is it, Pop? It's the old psychology. You see, all I have to do is start exaggerating things much worse than she ever dreamed of. When she sees how silly that sounds, she'll quit exaggerating things herself. Do you understand? Sure. Oh, boy, that sounds good. Now, David, don't be surprised at anything I say at breakfast. I may say some very strange things, but I think this will cure your mother. Okay, Pop. Can I help you? Well, thanks, David, but I can handle it myself. When I really make up my mind to change something about your mother, you know what happens. I sure do, Pop. But you might as well try anyway. <laughs> How's breakfast, dear? Oh, just fine. That's good. Gee, I'm starved. I haven't had anything to eat for two weeks. What did you say, Pop? I said I haven't had anything to eat for two weeks. Neither have I. <laughs> What's the matter, dear? Uh, nothing. Uh, listen to this, David. Oh, Harriet, did I ever tell you about that fellow in my lodge? What about him? Well, do you know what he had for breakfast every morning? A hundred and thirty-five eggs. <laughs> Sunny side up. <laughs> Harriet, when I say that a fellow eats 135 eggs every morning, isn't there a certain bet you'd like to make with me? Of course. I'll bet you he likes eggs. <laughs> well, and there's something else I forgot to mention. This fellow that eats the 135 eggs for breakfast, he also finishes off 50 quarts of milk, 10 loaves of bread, and six dozen wheat cakes. And a pickle. <laughs> Another slice of bread, dear? Uh, thank you. Uh, by the way, Harriet, I saw the strangest thing in the paper this morning. It's all about a boy with two heads. Oh, is that so? Another boy with two heads. <laughs> there have been several cases like that lately. Well, this one is very unusual because one of his heads is smarter than the other, and this boy is in 4B and 4A at the same time. <laughs> That's right. Half of them is in my class. A little more milk, dear? No, thanks. I don't feel like eating anymore. I wonder what happened to Gloria. Well, I don't know, dear, but if you finish breakfast, I'll call her. Oh, Gloria! Gloria! Did you call me Mrs. Nelson? <laughs> yes, Gloria, I did. We finished breakfast. I imagine you must be pretty tired after the party last night, huh? Oh, I don't mind. Just that one couple did keep me awake, though. Oh, who was that? Well, after everybody else went home, there was one silly couple out on the porch, and they were mooning and cooing and, and talking mushy talk, and I just couldn't fall asleep. 
But, Gloria, you can't hear anything on the porch from your room. You can if you lean out the window. <laughs> Was there much food left over, Gloria? Well, let me see. Um, and there were 21 sandwiches. Oh, 21 sandwiches left over. Yeah. And did you put them away? Well, I put away 11, but I couldn't eat <laughs> Well, thanks to you, Gloria, everything at the party went smoothly, with the possible exception of those cocktails you mixed. Boy, they were really something. Oh, that's a wonderful drink, Mr. Nelson. I invented it myself. I call it the air pressure cocktail. The air pressure cocktail? One drink and you blow your top. <laughs> So that's what it was. My boyfriend, Elmer, really knows how to make strong drinks. He once mixed a drink, and all he took was one sip, and he ran up to the wall and drew a great big picture of an automobile on it. Oh, isn't that ridiculous? Yeah. <laughs> and then I took a sip, jumped in, and drove home. <laughs> I better take this pile of dishes away. Oh, before I go, I knew there was something I wanted to tell you. You know that drain in the sink that we've had so much trouble with? Yes. Well, there was something left in some of the glasses, and I poured them into the sink. It's not clogged up anymore. <laughs> I'll see you later. Harriet, did you hear that story Gloria told about the drink and the automobile? Yes, I thought it was very funny. You didn't think it was an exaggeration? Well, what do you mean, Ozzy? I simply mean that you've become so accustomed to exaggerations, dear, that you don't even notice them anymore. Now, take that fantastic story I told you before about a guy eating 135 eggs, 10 loaves of bread, 6 dozen wheat cakes, and 50 quarts of milk in one meal. It didn't even surprise you. Well, why should it surprise me? I've had your relatives over for dinner. <laughs> your Uncle Peter could eat that guy under the table and then eat the table right off of him. The last time your Uncle Peter had dinner here, you could reconstruct the skeleton of a cow from the bones in his plate. Harriet, it so happens that my Uncle Peter hasn't even got any teeth. Then I got news for you. He gummed us out of 40 red points. <laughs> Harriet, I'm merely trying to show you how foolish it is to exaggerate things. I know you don't mean any harm, but it's little things, like the price of a dress, the age of a piece of antique furniture. Oh, my the goodness. Number... What's the matter, dear? Gee, I almost forgot the antique man's coming this morning. Antique man? Harriet, you're not going to do the living room over again, are you? Well... But, Harriet, I had a hard time wearing those chairs down so they'd fit me. Why, it would be like selling a part of me. A very important part to me. Well, I'm not sure I'm going to do it, honey. And even if I do, I'll be haggling for at least a month with the antique dealers. Maybe I change my mind. Excuse me, will you, dear? But, Harriet, I haven't finished. Oh, you don't mind eating alone, do you? I mean about the exaggerating. Oh, that. I promise never to do it again as long as I live. There's an exaggeration right there. I'm going to cure her of that exaggerating if it's the last thing I do. And there's a distinct possibility it'll be the last thing I do. <laughs> the silver plate of 1847 Rogers Brothers is about ready to make a trip. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, America's finest silver plate is all set to go from Meriden, Connecticut, to the silverware dealer, to you. And let me tell you, it'll make the trip in style. 1847 Rogers Brothers Silver Plate will leave Meriden groomed in perfect beauty, as lovely as artistic hands can make it. And I'll wager if you could be around when it arrives at your silverware dealers, you'd see that old expert's eyes light up with welcome. It's been a long time since he's seen silver plate with the exquisite, unmistakable craftsmanship of 1847 Rogers Brothers. A long time since he's been able to say to one of you, now here's silver plate with design features formerly found only in solid silver. Well, it's a long time since you've seen 1847 Rogers Brothers silver plate yourself, but it won't be much longer. 
1847 Rogers Brothers Silver Plate is coming your way soon. So keep an eye out for it. Give it a welcome home. It's America's finest silver plate. Your silver plate. Created by famous 1847 Rogers Brothers. And here are lovely singing stars, the four famous King Sisters. I don't care. seems to have quite a problem on his hands trying to figure out a way to cure Harriet of her tendency to exaggerate things. Right now, he's out on the front lawn thinking things over and hunting for devil grass when the Bobby Sox department from next door calls to him. Hello, Mr. Nelson. Oh, hello there, Emmy Lou. How are you doing with that devil grass? Oh, pretty good. I wish that was my only problem. Oh, something serious? Well, no, not really, but it's something that might eventually prove embarrassing. Could I be of any help? I've got $9 saved up out of my allowance. Oh, well, thanks very much, but that's not what I meant this time. You see, I've been trying to prove something to Mrs. Nelson. (laughs) So far, I've been completely unsuccessful. What's it about? It's this business of exaggeration, Emmy Lou. Why do women exaggerate anyway? Women don't exaggerate, Mr. Nelson. They don't. No. It's just that after they get done telling the truth, they keep on talking. (laughs) Yes, it does sound pretty reasonable, but I still don't understand it. Well, I'll try to explain it to you, Mr. Nelson. Suppose I'm introduced to some boy and he's really an absolute goon. Do you imagine for one moment that I'm going to tell my girlfriends that I met a goon? Of course not. I tell them that I met the most divine man... An utterly handsome, simply super dreamboat. Oh, and then they think he's quite a guy, huh? Oh, no. Then they know he's a goon or I wouldn't have said all that. (laughs) Emmy Lou, you're going to make some man a fine wife. You're confusing already. (laughs) Let's get back to my problem. How am I going to stop Mrs. Nelson from exaggerating? Well, let me see now. Oh, I have an idea. You could... No, that wouldn't work. See, how does this sound to you? You could... No, that wouldn't work. Say, maybe I could... No, that wouldn't work either. (laughs) It 
really is a problem, Mr. Nelson. Maybe I was on the right track before when I was exaggerating things to show her how silly it sounded. That sounds like a good idea. I know, but it didn't work. Maybe I wasn't exaggerating the right things. Maybe I should get something she cares more about. Who's that man going into your house? Oh, it's probably the antique dealer. Are you getting new furniture? Well, Mrs. Nelson thinks so. Wouldn't be new anyway. It'd just be different old furniture. She's going to sell a few things to him, I think. Oh. As I was saying, if there were only... Hey, wait a minute. That's it. Antiques. Now, that's something that Harriet's crazy about. What are you going to do, Mr. Nelson? Boy, have I got an idea. When he tries to buy a piece of furniture, I'll put a figure on it that's so ridiculous he won't buy anything. That'll show Harriet where exaggeration can get you. That's a wonderful idea, Mr. Nelson. Go ahead. No, no, no. Not yet. First, I'll wait till he's in the house and looking over something he seems to like. And I'll come in with the surprises. By the time I get through, George Washington will have slept on every antique we have in the house, including the chandelier. <laughs> Mrs. Nelson? Yes. Are you Mr. Johnson from the antique shop? Oh, no, no. My name is Clark. I'm from the county tax assessor's office. <laughs> Just dropped in to get an estimate on your furniture so we can figure out your tax. Won't hurt at all. This year we're using Novocaine. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly seem happy at your work. Oh, I've been at it a long time. Know it like a book. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> When I start assessing, I ain't just a-guessing. <laughs> if it's got to be done, it's got to be done. Here's the living room. Go ahead and assess. Yeah, okay, I'll start with this table here. Well, it's very nice. Looks moderately priced. I'd say uh, $50. That's about right. Oh, hello, dear. Oh, hello, Harriet. Ozzie, this is Mr. Clark. How do you do? I was just looking this table over, Mr. Nelson. Your wife and I figure it's worth about uh, $50. $50? Are you kidding? This table is worth $5,750. Ozzy! Is this on the level? Absolutely. Well, take your word for it, but uh, <laughs> it just looks like an ordinary table to me. As a matter of fact, it was originally a footstool used by an old Scottish knight, eight feet tall. <laughs> Of course, the nights were longer in those days. Ozzy, dear, uh, Mr. Clark and is And I suppose the... you think this piano here is an ordinary piano? Well, it looks like a regular piano. Well, sir, this is one of the most valuable antiques in all America. This happens to be the very piano that the finance company took back from Franz Schubert. <laughs> Amazing. Are you sure of that? Well... Why do you think he never finished the unfinished symphony? <laughs> oh, say, I was wondering why he hadn't written anything lately. <laughs> Ozzy, why don't you let Mr. Clark judge these things himself? My wife is very modest about it, but practically everything in this room is a rare treasure. Oh, brother. Hey, I do. <laughs> I'd better mark some of these things down. Do uh, you have a pencil? Well, here, you can borrow my pen. Thanks. Now, uh, what would you say that piano and bench were worth, Mr. Nelson? Oh, really, Mr. Clark? Well, I that's don't... hard to say. Let me see. I tell you what, just put down any large figure. You won't be more than a few hundred thousand off. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you insist, I'll just... Oop. <laughs> Say, one thing I know ain't a rare antique is this pen you just handed me. <laughs> Look, I got ink all over my hands. <laughs> and besides, it's got the initial N on it for Nelson. Mr. Clark, N also stands for Napoleon, you know. It just so happens that was Napoleon's favorite pen. You mean he got ink on his fingers, too? <laughs> Why do you think he kept his hand inside his coat all the time? <laughs> Say, uh, Mrs. Nelson, you know, you haven't entered the conversation. I'm a little sorry I entered the room. <laughs> She's very modest about all this. Well, so much for the antiques. Now let's get down to the everyday stuff, like uh, 
Well, there's floor lamp here. Oh, well, that's just Mr. A little... Clark, you have just succeeded not only in picking out one of the most valuable possessions in the house, you have picked out the most valuable. This floor lamp? That's right. This floor lamp, as you so casually put it, was once used by Julius Caesar. Ju- oh, now wait a minute. <laughs> Electricity wasn't even discovered then. Now do you see why it's so valuable? (laughs) Oh, sure, sure. Well, now tell me, Mr. Nelson, uh, about what would you say the contents of the house are worth? Uh, conservative. Oh, I'd say uh, conservatively. Uh Uh, $450,000. I give up. Well... Thank you very much, Mr. Nelson. You've been most cooperative. It's been a pleasure, I'm sure, Mr. Clark. Uh, Mr. Nelson, before I go, may I say just one thing? Go right ahead. (laughs) (laughs) Ha, ha, ha! a silly sort of a fellow, isn't he? But a nice chap. Ozzy Nelson, will you please explain those ridiculous stories you were telling that man? The way you were exaggerating. Oh, was I exaggerating? Well, you know you were, and it was very embarrassing to me. Ah, now you begin to understand how embarrassing it is to me when you exaggerate. Darling, I hate to take that big, happy smile off your face, but do you know who that nice man was? Well, certainly, the antique man. No, dear. That was the assessor for our personal property tax, and this year it's going to be a honey. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Go on, tell me. I deserve it. Tell me what you think of me. I'm a dope. I'm a moron. Isn't that what you want to tell me? Of course not, darling. You meant well. I think you're the smartest, the sweetest, the cleverest, the handsomest, the most wonderful husband in the whole wide world. Well, at least I got you out of the habit of exaggerating. Ozzie and Harriet will be back in a moment. But first... But first, Mr. Smith, I have a bone to pick with you. Do you know what I did yesterday? I went to my silverware dealer and asked for 1847 Rogers Brothers silver plate. And he didn't have it. He said if he could have sold 1847 Rogers Brothers silver plate to all the people who've been asking for it the last three years, he could have been retired by now. I'm sorry, really sorry. But if you recall, all I've said is that 1847 Rogers Brothers silver plate... We'll be back at your dealer soon. And that soon is getting closer every day. Well, perhaps it's a little my fault. I'm so anxious to get 1847 Rogers Brothers silver plate, I I run every time I hear the name. And by the way, I saw a lovely 1847 Rogers Brothers pattern in a magazine the other day. And I've been trying to remember the name of it. Well, what's it like? Well, it has two flower ornaments, one right where the shaft joins the bowl and the other about halfway up. Oh, that sounds like adoration. That's it. Adoration. Did you notice how richly raised those ornaments were? That's a feature exclusive with 1847 Rogers Brothers. That's the pattern for me. I won't take anything else, no matter how long I have to wait. That's a sound resolution, madam. There's no silver plate more worth waiting for than 1847 Rogers Brothers. (laughs) And now back to Ozzie and Harriet. What's that paper you've got there, dear? It's a copy of our tax report. We owe exactly uh, one hundred fifty-two thousand seven hundred and forty dollars. And by the way, dear, from now on you'd better wipe your shoes before you come into the house. Our living room alone is worth half a million. Golly. Well, I'd better get down to the tailor shop tonight. The tailor shop? What for? Well, from there you can dig the shortest tunnel under the bank on the corner. <laughs> well, I guess you've suffered long enough, honey. Get that prison pallor out of your face. Our tax bill's very small because Mr. Clark got the correct figures and it's all straightened out. Well, Harriet, that's wonderful, marvelous. How did it happen? Well, all the time you were telling Mr. Clark those ridiculous things about our furniture... Yeah? I was standing behind you making certain widely used motions with my finger and forehead to indicate that your mental development had been arrested rather prematurely. (laughs) And then later, I phoned him to make sure. Well, uh, that's swell, I guess, but, well, just what did you tell him? Well, you understand, dear, we were in a tough spot. Yes, yes, I know. What did you tell him? Uh, In an emergency like this, you have to think fast, you know. I had to say something. Harriet, what did you tell the man? 
I told him you had a brain the size of a peanut. There you go exaggerating again. International Silver Company, creators of 1847 Rogers Brothers Silver Plate, invite you to listen again next Sunday to the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet with songs by the King Sisters and music by Ozzie Nelson's orchestra. And don't forget, America's finest silver plate is 1847 Rogers Brothers. You're right, Harriet. America's finest silver plate is 1847 Rogers Brothers. This program originates in the Hollywood studios of the Columbia Broadcasting System and is also broadcast over the Trans-Canada Network of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. This adventure of Ozzie and Harriet will be transmitted to our men and women overseas by shortwave and through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Appearing in support of Ozzie and Harriet were B. Benaderet, John Brown, Joel Davis, Louise Erickson. Original music was composed by Billy May. This is Vern Smith speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.